Denise, tell us about the segment you did with Bridges to Opportunity. Yeah, I dealt through the Kentucky Career Center, and I was so amazed about this opportunity, and specifically because of the grant money that they have, they are specifically targeting minorities and women. So let's take a look. I have a smile on my face again because I like this segment that I'm getting ready to introduce you all to. I'm here at the Kentucky Career Center and I'm here with Mr. Gil Finley. Gil, welcome to Urban Lifestyles. Hello, Ms. Maxwell. I'm so pleased to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Here at the Kentucky Career Center, uh, share with us what your role is and tell us about this project called Bridges to Opportunities. Um, my role is a program coordinator. I actually am employed with Kentucky State University and uh, this uh, partnership consists of three different dynamics. We have the state transportation with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, as well as the Office of Employment and uh, Training, mm -hmm. and then uh, Kentucky State University. We wrote this program um, back when the bridges were going to the bridges were going to be constructed here in Louisville, mm -hmm. and um, the the federal award monies came down and were channeled through the state and the state. Um, channel the monies through Kentucky State who wrote the program. And so this program is basically a program that's structured to hire minorities and females and focus on them to give them career sets uh, and long-term skills that will keep them employed within the construction industry uh, due to the diversity and the requirements uh, that are mandated. Because sometimes when I'm on the road and we see construction going on and I look at some of the workers, of course I don't see a lot of workers of color, and then I will wonder, how do these people, these employ employees working here, how did they know about these opportunities? So how does it come for your program? We get out and advocate a lot. We, uh, we use uh, different means and streams of uh, advertising, but a lot of it's word of mouth. We have a Facebook page and then we put out a lot of flyers and uh, we are actually located here in the uh, Kentucky Career Center, which is formerly known as the Unemployment Center. So we get a lot of folks who stream through and then you have construction companies as well that uh, sometimes register folks who need um, opportunities within the construction field. So uh, with that, of course, we know the word of the mouth is the, big, big, the biggest thing. Um, fortunately, we've been able in the last um, almost four years to serve over 2,000 people uh, as far as just touches um, coming through. Uh, and in within the ramifications of that, we actually have actually have had folks to be educated in three fields, and I'm going to tell you about here shortly on programmatic um, outcomes. But uh, in the fields of that, at least around over 700 have actually completed high school classes of blueprint reading, which is a college class. And some of that's the first time they've ever had it. Even journeymen, they come through, and we have one of our first tracks um, is basic blueprint reading. It's a comprehension class that uh, they get to introduce them into construction that the unions actually use, and a lot of the uh, uh, construction companies want them to have. So the industry's changing. They want more certifications, and so it never laps. And within a week, uh, they can get a basic blueprint class, which uh, pose will take them a whole semester in college. So we have two of the graduates of the Bridges to Opportunity program, and I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. My name is Crystal Hoyt. Tavares Hollins. Yeah, so welcome to Urban Lifestyles, and thanks for sharing about your experience. I wanted to ask you all, uh, how did you find out about the program, and what did you like most about it, and what did you find most challenging about it? Um, I found out about this program looking for a job. I, sw I, I was going to school when I met him. Um, I went to school at TT Technical for um, architectural drafting, and I was getting ready to graduate, and I didn't like my job. Oh, okay. And how about you, Tavar? Well, I was sitting up watching TV one day, and um, I seen the commercial, and they said that they pay for the uh, grants and stuff. So I was like, whatever. So I, uh, I just came on down, and um, it was true. I mean, I come out of my pocket with nothing. They pay for everything. Does that mean that you, does that, mean that you already had uh, a desire and an interest going this, in this type of field? Well, yes. Um, I wanted to be a welder, and um, I knew how to MIG well, but I didn't know how to stick well. So I came down, um, met Mr. Finley, and he got me in the program, and got all my certifications, and I'm going back to um, take advanced welding. So, Chris, I know you said you didn't care for going into the uh, field of architectural. Yes. So what made you decide, like, hmm, I have an interest this route? Because a lot of people who draw can't build. So I wanted to go into construction, and there was more opportunities there. So, Denise, that was a great segment you yes. did. Bridges to Opportunity is all about connecting people to uh, career opportunities in construction. construction. Yes. Okay. Basically, two things to please remember. 
go down to Six and Cedar mm -hmm. down in the basement. And also, too, they do not discriminate against felons. And I know sometimes he was saying, sometimes you've you know, been incarcerated, you can't come out, find a good job. It's a vicious cycle. But this is one opportunity. If you have desire and commitment, you can get on the path of making a good career. We'll take a quick break and back with more right after this.